And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to the Valley of the Judged. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have my good brother here in the temple, the man of a thousand runes, the CEO of Zadari Enterprises, and the bane of my fucking existence, good brother Xanatrix. Ooh. It, it, is once, it is once again time for us to visit Vale of the Void and our, continue our journey through its myriad classes. As it as it is freeze as it is freezing fucking cold because the Midwest is in is in that kind of mood right now. Even well, Texas is in the no, in the na well no we're not in the negatives this year but we're below thirty which makes Monk laugh and me laugh and then I look outside and remember everybody driving is retarded. To be fair, everybody around here drives retarded. But at least they can handle themselves on the ice and snow, Monk. <laughs> Are you serious? Did my deadpan give it away? <laughs> yeah. God damn it. Was At least I got you to laugh. I hope somebody else laughs at that one, too. Anyway. So la last time around, we handled the architect. Which could be best summarized as the uh, as um in, as equal parts engineer and ma and mad scientist. Spy sat in my sentry. Or I think we I think we also described it as Kang the Mad in RPG form. Yep. <laughs> At least one of those one of the archetypes is a or one of the sub the sub archetypes is a is a is a Kang the Mad clone. <laughs> Yeah, because while they're very good at what they, where they're they're very good at their, at constructing things, sometimes those things explode. Yep. Of course, during discussion of this with, <laughs> with Trevor, he brought he brought up the whole modern problems require modern solutions, uh, meme. That is a classic Dave Chappelle skit, and I love it. But this time around, we are handling the combat medic, which. Once again, I um I find it I find it funny that we made that we made a bunch of two fort jokes when we were delving into classes originally, and <laughs> so, fa so far I so far I am continuing to wonder if a good chunk of Veil of the Void was played in between two fort rounds. Uh, yep. So we're gonna see if Combat Medic truly is uh, well, the man who changes out hearts with. His pigeon Archimedes. But don't don't worry, ribs grow back. No, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Although I'd I'd expect nothing le I expect nothing less from a bird named named after one of the original streakers. Yep. <sighs> See, even I can get classy with my jokes. You? Classy? I put the no, ass I... in class. I'm not going to dignify that one with a response! But, going... Because of the fact that we're tackling a, me a medic, i.e. A, .e. a healer, this is as good a time as any to talk about why I fucking hate healbot archetypes. And yes, a lot of a lot of this is due to is due to um experience in my 3.5 days. Nope. And and a good chunk of my D&D days period because there was the there was the impression that all the cleric's job was to was heal. Yep. And of course, we see this. We see this plenty in vi in video game form. But the big problem, th the big problem that I've always had with the heal bot archetype is the is the is the idea of boiling down the wealth of actions that an archetype can have to just this one thing. Because. Uh, granted, granted, obviously you want people to have their health up, but I've always argued that an easy way to 
d to um, fix that issue is make it so that they're not that they don't have the monopoly on it. This is why when four when fourth edition came around, I did not I did not mind one bit the presentation of healing surges, despite people making Wolverine jokes about about it. Or the uh, aforementioned argument we hate. It's like potions in an MMO. Even though they're not, in, fa in fact, you look at potions within M in an MMO, and um, they are far they are not exactly efficient healing methods in most yeah. of the ways. Um, because yeah, yeah, they can heal, but they've got crazy amount of cooldown. And if you need yep. a recent example of this, look at um, look at FF fifteen, not fifteen, uh, fourteen. No. Where yeah, you'll you'll certainly heal you'll certainly heal a fair bit, but then you've got a cooldown of a minute. Yep, yep. I think it was like sixty or ninety seconds, I can't recall specifically. But it does it does mean that for th for the amount of healing that you get from a potion and the amount of cooldown you have to put up with, it is far it is far more it is far more efficient to just wait to either A Wait for natural healing, which is pretty, which is pretty fast, admittedly. Or have a or have a white mage on hand. This is when we bully our friends and make sure that they're healing us. Mm -hmm. Oh, now, I know, I know, I know. There's the whole thing of don't mess with the white mage because they're controlling whether you live or die. To that, to that, I say. If we die, then you then you've got to be the frontliner. Yep, we 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 play tanks, people, mm -hmm. and we will be perfectly happy to uh to pull in a comfortable range so that nobody dies. Um, we're we're good at taking context clues on how big or small a pull that a healer or a group can can get through. But if a healer decides to be a little bitch, we will stop doing our jobs. It's a team effort. No one person controls the flow. Well, except for DPS, they never control the flow. <laughs> and I'm perfect. And and even if even if we end up playing even if we end up playing DPS or or tank DPS, same same rule applies. We le we leave the healers boned. Exactly. But again. Again, you again having having its having its spread, uh, you can you can have you can have that monopoly on healing in an MMO or or a video game because of how those kind of games are going to work. Especially if they're built around some form of a golden triangle. Yep, and the engagement is is much more involved because of the action variants. Yeah. Um, whereas in most TTRPGs, where you have the heal bot issue. Your action variance is move, heal person, which is not fun. No. And I know some people. Will, I know some people will say, but clerics, but clerics can also can do other things too, like turn, like turn. Yeah, only undead, which, as we established in the past, is largely dependent on undead being in a campaign, and that's a bit of an ask for the GM. For something that specific, I know the reason why it was implemented because that because of the implication that clerics are vampire hunters as well. Um, kind of hard to do, but kind of hard to do that if you want if you want to say that you can do any kind of fantasy, and that brings the question of what if my setting doesn't have vampires or have undead of any kind. Or just that form of undead. What if I'm do? What if? Because um, undead is going to have a completely different context if if say voodoo is involved. Mm hmm. Or if you're doing something with a bit of dark humor, and and like say, like say a can like say a campaign where you're where um, you're go where undead are going to be more are going to be more frequent than not. Why am I thinking of Sir Daniel Fortescue for some reason? I don't know. 
But uh, it's a pretty medieval thought for you. <laughs> the reason the reason why I'm jumping around with these kind of things is because of the because of the because of the problems that end up having when you badly design a healing centric archetype, and unfortunately because of the fact that that he, that a lot of those issues stem from the ele the alleged the alleged world's greatest RPG in the in their in their mind in a very delusional mind. Um, that kind of shit rolls downhill. Mm -hmm. Now, am I am I saying that every game that has a healer archetype falls into that trap? Honestly, no. But because of the fact that the big one does, people create assumptions. So with that with that in mind, let's look at the combat medic. So it it opens up with a we open up with a bit of fluff as usual. We're not, we're not doing the quote thing again because the quotes here would be too long. But even though I know you all want to hear my mar my marvelous accents. <laughs> so medics are the brave souls that heal and maintain the battlefield. They run through danger manipulating and transferring health between allies and enemies. Through the usage of their special dual pistols and rifles, they revive and heal. They don't heal allies as much as they transfer, sacrifice, and manage health. While they may be healers, to assume they are weak would be a mistake. To assume they are passive can be deadly. Combat medics are not afraid to fight to protect themselves and their patients, stealing health from adversaries to heal their allies. They use potions and anesthetics to harm and hinder enemies, while they use adrenaline and nanobots to give their allies an edge. Most combat medics are recognized foremost for their compassion, though most are every bit as tactical and fierce as well. Whether from experience or intensive education, combat medics know who to treat first, when, and to what extent given the situation. The utility makes them a fine addition to any team. Um, based on the way that the, that the description is made, I get the feeling that the, um, and we'll probably, get, we'll probably see this later on, that the inspiration leans more towards battlefield medic slash surgeon, rather than the typical healer. Um, that's what it feels like. Mm -hmm. And, um, the whole transfer, sacrifice, and manage health thing, while not exactly how medic works in TF2, is somewhat close. Depending on your loadouts, you could actually make something like that. Um, in the end, this sounds, I, I like the idea of life steal to heal your enemies mm. or to heal your friends. That's a, that's fun. Mm -hmm. Now, then we get to starting proficiencies. They are proficient w with pistols and auto rifles, light and medium armor, as well as meta kits, meta shots, and meta water. Um, we'll probably meta shots. Hmm. Um, I and I end up I end up thinking of once I end up thinking of of um the sur of the sur certain um, unlockable sur syringe weapons that the medic had in two fort. Yep. <laughs> Uh, then we get into start leveling HP beyond level 1. Upon each level level up, add 1d6 plus 1d3 plus vit, or 5 plus vit to your max HP. Then we have the choice of the choice of starting items, either two caliber pistols or one blaster rifle, synthetic light or medium armor, um, 5d6 times 1000 um, SC, Five meta shots and f and five meta water and one bonus level in medicament. Mm -hmm. Then we get to our level our level one abilities. First being meta weapons. You may transform a weapon into a meta weapon. To transform a weapon, you must spend four hours and succeed a hard four crafting check. You may have four meta weapons at any one time. Meta weapons use your medicament when attacking. 
Once per round after a successful attack with this weapon, you may heal an ally within two times mentality squares by the damage dealt, up to four times mentality and HP. Alternatively, you may store the HP. You can store up to 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 plus mentality HP at every fifth level. You may transfer your HP to another ally instead of attacking, including your we inflicting your weapon's damage to yourself in pure damage to heal them by the same damage, max four times mentality. This healing may affect a target three times per day. If you dual wield meta weapons, you are treated as having a point invested in the dual wielding skill. Stored HP lasts until the end of combat or 15 minutes outside of it. That's, uh... Why is it again? First, the architect with the ability for, with the ability uh, uh, of prototypes to scrap themselves. Now, the combat medic with the ability to shoot themselves in order to heal someone. <laughs> I'm sorry, is this Persona 3? <laughs> I feel like this is Persona 3. Are these evokers? Is everybody just shooting themselves in the head? Once is a once is an anomaly. Twice is a coincidence. Thrice is a pattern. We'll see if we'll see if the streak continues next week. If it does, um, not only is this way way more like uh, TF2 in in certain ways, but uh, I don't know. I like I like the idea though. The fact that you can I shot somebody with this meta weapon, and now. You, next round, you over there, yeah, you, have some HP. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't see the ability to heal yourself. It says an ally, but I is that... Wait, wasn't there that note earlier about if it says an ally, it means it includes yourself, but if it says an other ally, it means anyone but you? I believe so. I need to find that out. Hold on. I, I need to go look at that note again. Because mm -hmm. I know there was, an, uh, there was a note about it. Yeah, it's, it is important to note if an ability states that it may target an ally, that includes yourself. If it states another ally, it does not include yourself. Yes, I knew I remembered that correctly. Hey! Yeah. The second item that you get is Healer's Knowledge. Add your mentality virtue to all non-arcane medical item healing. For example, meta shots, synthetic skin, meta water... And you may heal players with these items an additional time per day. Ooh, extend your uh, your your particular resources. Very nice. Mm -hmm. And and so, uh, as as per usual, uh, skills that cannot be swapped out or, or given to other classes are marked with an asterisk. And obviously, both meta weapons and healer's knowledge are marked with such an asterisk. Yep. And. Hold on, hold on a second. My PDF viewer is being a dingus. Um. Well, if you if you continue to have issues with the PDF viewer, I can go ahead to level two. I do. I do appreciate that. All right. So at level two, uh, you get another uh, medic unique, medic's creed. All combat medics uphold a specific creed. These creeds are their oath, the foundation on which their practice rests. Below is a list of several creeds and what their effects are. Upon reaching level 2, you choose one of the creeds. You can gain an additional, or you do gain an additional one at levels 5, 10, and 15. And the creeds are heal and harm. Those with this creed learn to heal an ally and bring harm to those around them. Once per round, when you heal an ally, deal that same damage to an adversary within three squares of the targeted ally. <laughs> well, that's certainly one way to fulfill the Hippocratic Oath. Uh, creed number two, if it is given me to save a life, all thanks. 
This creed is a vow to protect those you heal. Choose another ally, and while you maintain concentration on them, you absorb half the damage they take. Cover? Yep, that's cover. Combat medic is the goddamn paladin? <laughs> is the, is a medic and a and a and a paladin? Nice. Or to, to put it another way, and this is the fir this is the first time I'm referencing this particular game. Um, Mercy and Reinhardt combined. Oh God. So in other words, <sighs> it, but not shit. Oh God. So the third creed. Malpractice is sometimes called for. Okay, okay that's that's a creed. <laughs> when you roll three threes or three fours on an attack against an adversary, they immediately take five plus half level of pure damage, regardless of successful attack. Four <laughs> round cooldown. I'm just going to do six and or more pure damage to you, depending on my level. No biggie. Prevention is preferable to cure. Once per round when you heal an ally, you may grant them an additional plus four squares of extra movement on their next turn. That's nice. Heal and speed boost. Mm -hmm. Art as well as science. You are fully dedicated to your craft. You may re-roll a failed medicament check once every three rounds, even if the check has already been re-rolled. Okay, so if you if you have a, a way to re-roll a check because of other features, and then you still fail it, you can re-roll it again with this thing if it's charged. Mm -hmm. That's pretty nice. Yep. Treat with care in life and death. You gain plus four squares of extra movement. Do no harm. I have a feeling that this creed is facetious. <laughs> what, if you deal, be the if first you, time <laughs> Yeah? If you deal no damage for three rounds, add plus five to your outgoing healing. Oh. Okay. And then, of course, they also get the extra skill point that everyone gets. Yep. So, at level three, they gain overdose. Once every three rounds, you may expend the stored HP in your weapon to add the HP as bonus damage to your attack. This attack does not activate your meta weapon healing. Alternatively, you may activate this ability to expend the store the store HP typo and heal an ally by 10% of your max HP. <laughs> okay, so I mean, it's not called Uber Charge, but, uh, it's close. <laughs> and at, at level four, you gain, adva you gain advancement training, well, plus one virtue point, and, and, on ex and one expertise, again, with the typo. At level five, you gain your, you gain your specialization. We have three paths. Conscientious Objector, Sawbones, and Tactician. And we will get to those. At level 6, you gain Overcharge. <laughs> what was that about Overcharge? <laughs> I said nothing. <laughs> okay, Sergeant Schultz. <laughs> I have dated myself with that joke, and I don't care. You may over anyway. You may overcharge your weapon. When you do so, you gain an additional attack action. Four round cooldown. Jesus. <laughs> and keep it. Keep in mind, all that healing shit that you can do does st would probably still apply with that overcharge. So that's not only double the attack op options. That's double the healing options. I am ready for my overcharge. Yes. Now, I know we. I know we. I know we um, balked at the at, at the extra attack feature with a lot of classes in Five E. I think this gets away with it because of the sheer amount of stuff you can do with it. In a weird well, way, it kind it kind of reminds me of one of the not capstone but high but high level features for the martial artist in Fantasy Craft. 
That being, yeah. they can use two martial tricks on an attack instead of one. Yeah. It's also not something that is... I think part of the reason we balked at extra attack in 5e was... Uh, so many martial classes didn't have access to it. Like, so... And the martial classes that did have access to it didn't really have a lot of options with which to execute. It was just, oh, you got extra attack, so you'd, you'd attack again that round. That that end, the whole thing, that end... It's... It, for me, for me, my issue was it was a case of lipstick on a pig because a lot of characters that had extra attack didn't have a whole lot of other options. Yeah, there was there was not a whole lot that you that you would execute with it. This not only uh, is unique to the combat medic for the reason of it being something like a uh, an overcharge of their meta weapon in order to execute an extra attack. But their attack actions, as you said, are used for multiple different things. Plus, it's got a cooldown time. So it's not something you can rely on. It's something you want to strategically use. Mm -hmm. So, at level, se at level 7, you once again gain advancement training. At level 8, you gain a certified surgeon. You gain additional plus 1 bonus die on medicament checks. At level 9, you gain Medical Emergency. Once per 24-hour period, when another ally takes more than 3 times mentality in unmodified damage, after all abilities reduce the damage taken for... After all abilities reduce the damage taken, for instance, shields. You may prevent that damage and heal them by the amount. At level 10, it's 2 times mentality in damage. At level 15, it's equal to mentality in damage. So basically, once it breaks a specific threshold, uh, you, you can go, "Hey, yeah, you took my, you, you took mentality and unmodified damage." Mm -hmm. at, you're like level fifteen. Mm -hmm. Like, at the very least, that's when it breaks the threshold. But for example, that could be, say, they take eight mental, they t they take twenty damage. After all modifiers and everything have brought it down to uh, or a, in, in unmodified damage. And so it breaks your, your mentality threshold of 8. So you're just like, nah, I'm going to heal you 20 damage instead. Mm -hmm. Not to mention you didn't take that 20 damage in the first place. Yep. Um, that's... <laughs> I'd also like to point out that Certified Surgeon and Medical Emergency are both transferable skills yep so you also gain trained reflexes at the start of combat you may add two to an ally's initiative oh. at 10th level you gain you gain your next ability and your specialization at 11th level you gain um, advancement training once again at 12th level you gain critical healing if you roll three threes or three fours during a successful medicament check, you heal for plus eight HP or heal an additional ailment. Okay. Okay. I'm completely fine with that. It's also another transferable skill. Mm -hmm. At 13, you, gr you gain emergency stabilization. You may sacrifice your next turn and 20 HP to prevent a PC's death. They immediately heal 50% of your max HP. This can be used once every two days. <laughs> Understandable, given how powerful that is. Okay, so I understand what this is trying to say. Um, but this is, this is slightly misleading. Um, I know that what this is saying is you sacrifice 20 HP and your turn to prevent another player's death. They immediately heal HP equivalent to 50% of your maximum. Mm -hmm. That is what it's trying to say. Yeah. That shortening is a little fudgy. Um, sorry, as, as someone who's had to fight rules lawyers for forever, 
I try to make things very specific in terminology. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, nothing against you, Trevor. This game has been f- so much fun to review so far. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. At 14, advancement training once again. At 15, you um, specialization once again. At 16, you gr- you gain medical license. The thing that the two fort medic doesn't have. Um, people will now more often hire you for medical needs such as surgery. They will pay you three times the amount typical typically paid for your services. What? And Wait, that's what? a tra- that's a transferable one. That's a, a yeah. First, that's a transferable skill, but secondly. This is a completely... So, most of the things we saw with Architect, in fact, all of the things I think we saw with Architect, had to do at least somewhat with skill checks in combat. Mm -hmm. This is, I think, the the uh, the first feature we've seen that this is... This is outside of skill checks this is outside of combat this is something that affects the reputation of your pc and affects how they earn a living which is interesting i look forward to see how this plays out when we get to other sections of the book Mm -hmm. let's see um at 17th level advancement training again at 18th level you gain life transfer when you attack with your meta weapon and you succeed, you may heal your HP by the damage dealt. Four round cooldown. Nice. At level 19, you gain Shield of Benevolence. Once per long rest, grant a five point energy shield to all allies within two times mentality squares from you. These shields last for two rounds and heal their targets for 10 HP per round. I was ki- I was kidding when I said Mercy plus Reinhardt. I don't know that that seems a little bit more like uh, Zenyatta, with his yeah. with his little orbs. AKA the AKA one of my mainstays, and not just because Monk. Though that doesn't hurt. I'd like to point out that Shield of Benevolence is another transferable. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and at twentieth, you gain you, you gain your final spe- you gain first off your final specialization. Second off, you gain your ultimate, um, Medical Specialist. Add a permanent plus one to your mentality. This may bring you above nine. Add your mentality to your meta weapon healing and additional plus five range to your ranged meta weapons. Your melee meta weapons inflict the sickly condition, lasts for two rounds, and may only affect the same target twice per combat. So you turn into you you turn into a plague marine? <laughs> At least partly. It definitely se- it definitely seems that way. Yep. So now we get to the specializations. Um, the first specialization seems to be the combat medic's only unique specialization. Mm-hmm. That of the conscientious objector. Most combat medics focus their study upon the preservation and health management of their allies. The conscientious objector is a medic that strives towards complete and total protection of their allies. They can quickly swap and manage HP, even outside of their turn. They are also able to prevent incoming damage more effectively on allies. So they start off with two abilities. The first is medical necessity. You may sacrifice your reaction to target another ally when they take damage. You then choose another willing ally or yourself and transfer your mentality in max HP to your target as energy shield po- as energy shield points. You can cancel this effect at any time and it can only affect one ally at a time. After you cancel the shield, this goes into a 3 round cooldown. You get back the max HP but do not heal your current HP. That's an interesting ability. You you bop your own max HP to bring up an energy shield equivalent on someone else. Mm-hmm. 
But I understand why you only get your max HP back when you cancel a shield. It's like a sustained effect. And the, yes. and the cost of sustaining is continuing to have your lower max HP. So, you know how we've made two fort jokes throughout this? What immediately comes to mind for me is the heavy medic combo. Yep. 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 Absolutely. <laughs> Anytime you play two fort, it is inevitable that you will find the... He the med the medics heal the medics healing gun shoved fir shoved firmly where the s where the sun don't shine on our favorite Russian bear. And so long as he's sticking right behind the heavy, he's usually safe. And you're and getting and slowly b building up uber charge to make things even worse. Yep. Oh, then we. The other one that we, the other one that the objector gets is adrenaline boosters. You load your weapons with adrenaline boosters. You may target an ally as an extra action. That ally gains one of the below bonuses until the end of your next turn, two round cooldown. Either one, gain an auto hit die on the on their next attack or deflect. Two, reduce incoming damage by your mentality virtue, minimum of one damage. Three. Deal an additional half level of pure damage on their next attack. Four, under the sprint effect for their ne for their next movement, ignores the negatives of sprint. Five, may reroll their next non-combat check, including one results. Or six, treat it as having plus one bonus level in their next skill check. Two is your standard uber charge that uh, blocks damage, and three is the crits krieg. Um, also, given that I've been making some Overwatch jokes, Anna. <laughs> <sighs> I forgot Anna was a healer. At level 10, you gain, t you gain two more abilities. First is improved stamina. You may sacrifice your action to grant another ally an additional extra action or reaction on their next turn. Four round cooldown. Or Aura of Mercy. While within three <laughs> squares of another ally, you may reduce the damage they take by five. You know, you didn't have to literally make this all Overwatch, Monk. I, w I was kidding. I, I seem, know. I seem, to be, I seem to be doing a lot of jinxing this week. Foot and mouth disease, Monk. Foot and mouth disease. At level 15, you gain Group Therapy. Once every three rounds, when you heal another ally's current HP, you may target two additional allies within 15 squares. Those allies heal for half the HP given. Does not use your HP or stored HP to heal the additional allies. It's splash healing. <laughs> yep. It's fucking splash healing. And at level 20, the capstone you get is medicinal mastery. All non-arcane medicinal items add two times mentality to the final HP value and gain two additional uses each day. This replaces the healer's knowledge ability. So you basically double up your, uh, or more, actually, I should say. Healer's knowledge was just, uh, was just mental. Yeah, it is double. Two times mentality and two times uses instead of, or two times extra uses. Two extra uses, yep. Yep. But as, as uh, I previously stated before, conscientious objectors is the, is the only specialization that is non-transferable. It is unique. Mm -hmm. So everything else we talk about from here out is technically a transferable uh, specialization. Yep. So the next one that we have is Sawbones. Malpractice among healers is generally looked upon with distaste. Oh, However, that's a, medic. a few medics prefer to focus on hindering al adversaries to help their allies. A good offense makes for a good defense, or so they say. 
Sawbones focus on hindering adversaries using anesthetics, irradiation beams, and viruses. You get and you get some additional proficiencies. Oh you are God. proficient <laughs> in heavy armor, and you gain a bonus level in either weapons master or dual wielding. Oh my God! <laughs> you also gain malpractice. Your weapons may become an irradiation laser sword or daggers at will. You may use your power slash finesse slash mentality or either power finesse or mentality virtue to attack. This we the weapon inflicts plus five pure damage, pierces energy shields, and gains an additional attack action. It does not give HP to allies in this form. If these attacks hit a target with an energy shield, that shield will explode, dealing two, three, four, or five d6 pure damage to all adversaries within two squares of the target. Three I'm guessing those increases three. are with each uh, step inside the specialization. Mm-hmm. It's so like 2 at the level 5, and then 3 at the level 10, 4 at the level 15, and then 5d6 at the level 20. Yep. At level 10, you gain combat personnel. While wearing heavy or medium armor, you gain a 5-point nano shield. You also gain nano virus. You have, an aura of nano you have an aura of nanobots aid you in combat. When an adversary s starts or ends their turn adjacent to you, they take your mentality and electrical damage. While adjacent to you, they must perform a contested vitality check every two rounds. On a failure, they take the damage again and lose one reaction. What? I am around you, so you can take... What? If they're in the eight squares around you, because that can... that's considered the adjacent area, that same area where a reaction attack can occur, um, on a medium character... They take your mentality and electrical damage, and then every two rounds they have to they have to make a contested vitality check, or take take the damage twice and lose a reaction. What? <laughs> At level fifteen. You gain anesthetics. You may launch one as anesthetic round from your target from a weapon at a target within eight squares. If you succeed at the attack, they are stunned. This effect lasts two rounds. Another anesthetic cannot affect them during the same combat. Are you sure you're licensed to be an anesthetician? Probably not. And at level twenty. They gain Nano Repulsion. Once every three rounds when you take damage from an adversary, your combat personnel shield explodes. This explosion deals two times mentality and force damage to all adversaries within a 7x7 seven seven field centered on you. The nanobots then heals all allies within a 9x9 nine nine field of the damage dealt. Adjacent adversaries are knocked back three squares from you. <laughs> there is a reason this is a level 20 skill yes <laughs> there is there is a reason this is a level 20 skill first i explode second my explosion only hurts enemies third it knocks any enemies right next to me three squares away and finally it heals all my friends. <laughs> because there, there's a case, there's a case of the fuck you button. If I ever heard it, combat medic in close, all of a sudden, motherfuckers like I hate you and hits you. Yeah. Oh, you really shouldn't have done that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, really shouldn't have done that one. Mm -hmm. oh. And the third one that we have is Tactician. Combat medics can be natural leaders. Many become tacticians on the front lines, leading their patients toward a safe victory. Tacticians specialize in assisting and leading others in battle. They strive to lead those in their care to victory. 
You also gain heavy the heavy armor proficiency in this. As well as Commander's Presence. You're given you're given five commander points per tier that refresh every short rest. Using a commander point is an action. You can perform these abilities from the list below by spending these points. Watch your flank. You may spend two points to allow a party member to turn and attack an, ad an adversary within their adjacent area. Advance. You may spend one point to allow all party members within 12 squares of you to move up to five squares towards you or another target. Attack my target. You may spend five points to allow two party members to attack a chosen target. Shields up. You may spend two points and 10% of your max HP to grant three allies five energy shield points. This lasts for two rounds. After the shield's expired, regain the max HP but do not heal the current HP. Retreat. You may spend three rounds to allow, to allow another ally to retreat from melee without causing an RS. They may move up to four squares away from the engaged target. Hey, Monk. Yeah? Warlord vibes. Yep, Warlord, Warlord vibes. H&H &H fighter vibes. Yep. Yeah. Now, interesting thing to note, while Tactician itself is not a unique uh, specialization, this next feature within it is unique to the combat medic. Hmm. Or maybe unique to just the Tactician? I'm not sure. Uh, of course, the, the idea of being able to um, pick and choose between specializations would be, certainly be interesting. Indeed. Uh and ba based on what based on what um, Trevor has mentioned regarding the customization within the game, I wouldn't put it past. Same. Anyway, the spec the spec is Avenging Strike. Whenever a party member is hit, you may spend a your reaction to launch a melee or ranged attack against the attacker based on where you are standing. If your attack hits, heal another ally within five squares of the target by. Your mentality in HP. <laughs> very not very very nice. Um, at level fifteen, you gain commanding tone. You gain plus one bonus level in speechcraft. If you speak calmly and logically, you roll with two auto hit dice on speechcraft checks. Does this mean if you speak calmly and logically in character? I believe so. Okay! Roleplay affecting mechanics! I like it! And hold the line. You have an aura. Hold the line! <laughs> you have an aura. Uh, Commander Sherry. NPCs, especially soldiers or battalion groups, will trust and follow your logical commands in battle. All adversaries within 10 squares of you roll with an auto miss die on attacks against allies within the same range of you. So if they're attacking your friends within 10 squares of you, they have an auto miss die. Wow. Okay. And at level 20, you gain true leadership. Your commander's presence abilities use an extra action instead of an action. You regain one spent point every five rounds of combat. If combat is holding out that long... At level twenty, that's invaluable. But it, but it's not it's not OP because by that point you're gonna have a lot of commander points. Oh, I know. I'm just saying it's invaluable. But I de I definitely like the I definitely like the warlord vibe that you get with this, and especially since. That it since tactician is is a non-exclusive specialization. Yeah, I only think avenging strike is 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 the unique feature because it does mention healing specifically. So I'm not sure whether that means that avenging strike is unique to tactician and can't be uh, can't be swapped between other specializations, or that it's unique to combat medic and can't be swapped to other uh, other classes. 
we'll I'm gonna have to probably end up tear that some, apart. Yeah, we'll probably end up getting some confirmation on that later. Yeah. That being said, I think I think it's it's fair to say that any I know I know that there are some people that we know who insist on playing healers out of habit. Um, I honestly honestly think that that people who to who are in that mindset of typically playing the healer are going would ha if they were going to play combat medic they would have to reapproach their tactics. I think that would be the best reason to make them play combat medic. <laughs> oh, we play heal we play healer all the time. Okay, here you go, combat medic. It's a healer. And while while Light. they can while they can do the whole sit back and sit back and heal um, approach, you have to. It's very clear that the combat medic hat demands being a bit more aggressive than what people would expect from a healer archetype. Yeah, the um the conscious the conscientious objector archetype would be the one closest to being a uh less active, but it's still very active. I'm just not less active than the other two, but still very active. Mm -hmm. Um, if I had to compare this to anything, and I'm pretty sure that this comparison is apt, uh, you are playing a hunter from Bloodborne. You have to be in close, you have to hit and get hit. That's how the goddamn game works. The more vicious you are, the more uh survivability you have. As I seem to recall as I seem to recall, um didn't me Miyaz didn't Miyazaki des design Bloodborne in the way that he did because he was get because of the fact that he didn't want p he was getting a little annoyed with the um with the sh with the shield obsessions, I I don't remember. I don't. Uh, I didn't actually see any of the interviews with uh, with with whether he said that or not. Um, so I'm not going to claim that I know whether that's the case or not. But it's very clear he wanted Bloodborne's game style to reflect Bloodborne's nature, because. You know, the whole thing about Dark Souls, it is the nature of decay. The decay of... of... of something stagnating. Something losing its potential because it doesn't change. Mm -hmm. Whereas Bloodborne is almost the opposite. It's the decay of, uh, of humanity due to the invasion of something so alien that's changing it too quickly. Mm -hmm. And it is funny that we that we bring up something like Bloodborne given the Bloodborne PSX DMake that's been making the rounds. <laughs> that DMake is so good. <laughs> and you know that FromSoft isn't going to stop it. Well, Miyazaki, Miyazaki certain Miyazaki probably isn't. <laughs> I, from Soft loves fan projects. Mm -hmm. it, the only people who would likely put a C and D on it is Sony, and I don't think Sony will, because unlike Nintendo, Sony knows what good publicity is. <laughs> pretty much. Pretty much. Now, again, the, again, the key thing that the key thing that I that I, that I see with this is the. There's uh, something something that we've seen something that we've seen in both Heavens and Heresies and with Veil of the Void now is a doubling down on resource management. Yeah, but not in a way that is obtuse or overbearing. No. Um and in the in the case of the comp in the case of the architect, the resource was of was of course um was of course scrap and the management of it in order to do architect things. With the combat medic, it is is about ha is about having essentially a separate HP pool to to um distribute. Yeah, um, and also you, like I said, using your enemy's HP to heal your friends. Mm -hmm. I love the idea of transferring life steal. That is just so nice. And again, again, it also means that people who people who tended to do the whole sit back and heal thing are go are going to 
have a um, adjustment period with this because that that approach, as we said, it can be done, but you're not using the, you're not using your kit to the fullest extent. Yeah, you'd be limited to using your healing items, such as uh, the the whole uh, medi waters and stuff. Mm-hmm. And because you're not going to uh, get a whole lot. You're you're, you're not going to get a whole lot of that. Yeah, you're not going to get a lot of mileage. Mm-hmm. Um, those are there as supplement from what we're looking at. You get you get those pieces of equipment to help you early on when your skills aren't fully developed, mm-hmm. and also as stop gaps. Yeah. Um, because medi weapons, you start with those. You you can create a medi weapon out the gate, mm-hmm. uh, which means that you have a weapon where. If you deal damage next round, you heal someone. Mm-hmm. And since you're since everybody should be contributing to the fight, including the medic, you're going to be healing someone every other round at the very least, just to keep people topped off, maybe. Or if nobody needs topping off, you have that that option to tank it. You're like, oh, I'm going to store that. Cool. And when we, um. I'd say I'd I'd say if there if there's um I'd say one of the bit one of the points of comparison that I end up making oh we've made we've made jokes about the we've made jokes about um about the medic from Two Fort or or char- or characters like Mercy or An- or Anna in Overwatch but one other that I th- one other that I think is to a cer- to a certain degree uh, just as applicable even though this is a bit of a stretch, is a apothecary space marine. Yeah, it is a bit of st- a bit of a stretch, but I do see it. Simply due to the fact that, while an apothecary's job is extremely valuable, they are not they are not go they are no le- they are no less of fighters than their than their battle brothers. Yep. They're expected to be just as proficient in combat, mm-hmm. if not more so. Not only do they have to st- stick around to help their other brothers to heal up, they have to stay alive if they're going to do that. So they they kind of got to be a little more survivable. Espe- especially since they're the ones who it's, whose job it is to harvest the the material to create future gene seed from their fallen brothers. Yep, the progenoid glands, yeah. And in the and because because of because of that, it's the obvious question that that is going to be in the back of my mind is is the, is are they is the combat medic going to have a monopoly on healing? And given 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 the brief glimpse that we've gotten into some of the other casters, I get the feeling that's not going to be the case. But the combat medic is probably going to be the most reliable healer the most stable healer um i can i can see some of that yeah i i think that if other classes have healing abilities Mm -hmm. and i'm sure there will be other classes that have healing abilities i don't foresee him pigeonholing classes this much Mm -hmm. um the the healing methodology and the types of resources you're going to have to juggle are going to be different. Mm-hmm. And so that could be the combat medic as the most stable output. Not necessarily the highest output, but the most stable. Mm-hmm. Um, you may see somebody else getting the big burst heals, the somebody that you need in that pinch. You know, And that's after they've built up a resource that they may have already been building by doing other stuff like killing shit. Again... And of course, that's I, with the that's with the basics. When it comes to the when it comes to the specializations, like we said, the the closest thing to the heal bot is the conscientious objector. The other two, the other two, not the other two, not so much. The sawbones, especially not. That is basically no, saw- you trading you trading a lot of your healing abilities for more ways to fuck up the enemy and crowd control. Yep. And you still have your base healing abilities from the base class, so you're you're sacrificing 
extra healing abilities to deal extra damage and give yourself some survivability with that nano shield. Mm-hmm. Um, but <clears throat> excuse me, I the, like I said, the conscientious objector is the closest thing to a heal bot out of all the specializations for the combat medic. But that's like saying that a doorknob is the closest thing to a jar lid. Mm-hmm. They're both things you have to twist to open stuff. But you're opening two entirely different things. <laughs> the the conscientious objector is still in their fucking shit up. Just a little a little less actively than some of the other uh uh specializations. Mm-hmm. And of course with tactician that's that's the fucking warlord. <laughs> yes. Yes, this is you're sacrificing extra extra healing perks like you would get from conscientious objector for okay, I can heal you guys, but I can also have you guys fight like a goddamn unit and be extra protected too. Let's do this. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so there's a lot of variance of play here. I like it. Oh yeah. Oh. And looking at what we've got next week, next week will be the field night, which um, yeah. <laughs> just looking at what just looking at what it's got, that'll be the first time that we that we have a purely offensive class. The other ones have have offensive leanings, but they're but they're largely support, but their bread and butter is largely support. From yep. what I'm seeing with the field night, that's where that changes. Although um, the idea of the idea of a the idea of a um, of a field, you want to know what's something that would be really scary, hmm. based on what I've seen, a field knight that specialized in sawbones. <laughs> Stop trying to kill me, there, monk. No. Uh. I'm not gonna do that. I can only do that once. Uh, oh, good. Uh, but expect expect a, from what? But from what I've seen, the her, the hero shooter jokes will be continuing. I am gonna make a Clone Wars joke with the Field Knight. Oh, we, just based oh, we, on the we, art alone. <laughs> There are there are ma- there are many angles that we that we can take when the time comes, but that is that is a story for a for another day. Um, especially especially, and I'm really looking forward to that one because oh, oh boy, mm-hmm. there are so, there are so many gags I'll be I'll be able to make with that. And of course, of course, there will be a few. There will be a few other surprises coming down, coming down the road, including including a few familiar faces in the next few days. But until then, on behalf of the Good Brothers, present and not present, my name is Mildra. I am your gaming monk. Stay fucking frosty, everybody. <laughs>